Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to this next lesson in um, differentiation. I hope that you've had an awesome week so far and that you're ready for the weekend. Um, as we were doing yesterday, we were busy working on this problem here. And remember I said to you, we we're going to do quite a few of these uh, maximum questions. And then what I was going to do is go through a whole bunch of different questions on differentiation and calculus today. So that's what we're going to do. So let's carry on with this question. Yesterday I said to you that if you could, it'd be awesome if you could continue this question because we proved that a was equal to pi r squared plus 4394 pi over r. And then it said hence determine the value of r for which this area will be a minimum value. So what did I say to you guys? I said that in order to get a minimum value, what do you need to do? You need to find a dashed of x, the first derivative, let it equal naught, and then solve for x. That's what you need to do. You need to let the first derivative equal naught and then solve for x. Remember I said to you the reason for that is because effectively you're finding your turning points of your graph. And at those points there, the first derivative, like uh, y dashed of x, is going to be equal to naught. And data here, y dashed of x is equal to naught, where that would be the maximum and this would be the minimum. Okay, so in other words, we need to take this and we need to find the derivative. But we've got a problem in that r is at the bottom. So what do we need to do? We need to take it to the top. So if we do that, we've got a is equal to pi r squared plus 4394 pi r to the negative 1. And you know what I just realized, great, um, tells I don't know if you need to have writing yesterday because of the fact that it's on the question. So that's going delete and let's go back to the current slide. Okay, that's much better here. Hey? So we've got this that A and it's, you know what, let's just start again. Okay, so we've got that A is equal to pi r squared plus 4394, 4394 pi. But now we want to take this r and take it to the top because we don't know how to find the derivative of this if r is at the bottom. And we take it to the top, what does it become? It becomes r to the minus 1. Okay, so now we need to find the derivative of this. So we go a dashed of r. Why? Because we're finding it with respect to r, okay? If you're not sure about that, you can just go a dash, that's fine. So what happens? The 2 comes in front of this and it becomes 2 pi r plus, okay, now remember the minus 1 comes into the front, so it becomes minus 1 times 4394 pi r to the minus 2. Why is it minus 2? Because it becomes minus 1 minus 1. Okay, so it becomes 2 pi r minus 4394 pi r to negative 2. Okay, and what are we going to do? We're going to let this equal naught to get the minimum value. So we're going to let a dashed of r equal naught for minimum. For the minimum. You let it equal naught for the minimum or the maximum, okay? So let's do that. So we're going to say we've got 2 pi r minus 4394 pi over r squared equals naught. It's just a little bit easier to see it when you've got that r squared. Do you agree I can take out a common factor of 2 pi? There's a 2 here and a pi. And yeah, this is definitely an even number, so I can divide this by 2 and there's a pi. So I'm going to take out a common factor of 2 pi, and we're left with r minus 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 goes into 3 once, remainder 1, 2 goes into 19 9 times, remainder 1, and 2 goes into 14 7 times, over r squared equals 0, okay? So then we can ignore this because it's going to obviously if we divide naught by 2 pi it goes away. So we can just cancel that. So now we're left with this. So we want to get rid of the r squared. So the best way to do that is multiply through by r squared, right? So we're going to have, I'm sorry, I have to
so sorry about that <laughs> spring has finally sprung in cape town which is where i'm situated and, um yeah i i had to sneeze i'm sorry about that okay so let's go so we've got we're going to write this out over here so it becomes r minus 2197 over r squared is equal to zero to get rid of the r squared what are we going to do we're going to multiply everything by r squared so it becomes r cubed minus 219 and the seven is equal to zero. This multiplied with that gives you r cubed, and when we multiply this whole thing with the r squared, it goes away, cancels. So now we can take this to the other side. So we've got r cubed is equal to 2197. So what do we need to do? We need to find the cube root of 2197, and for that, we use a calculator. So, and a second. There we go. So let's switch this on. And there we go. We want the cube root. So we want the nth root. So if you go shift cube, there you go. And then you go 2197 and you go equals and you get 13. Ta da! So r equals 13. So hence determine the value of r for which this area will be a minimum value, r equals 13. Always reread your question because sometimes it'll say what is the area when? What is the minimum value for the area, okay? So you not just have to determine the value of r, but you have to have to work out the area. But in this case, they've just asked you to work out what the minimum, what the value of r is for the area to be a minimum. Okay, let's move on to another question. Okay, it says the average mass of a baby in its first three days of life is given by this equation with mass is given t cubed of 864 minus t squared over 72 plus 3.2. Okay, where t is the time in days and m is the mass in kilograms. Okay, so a lot of times students ask me when I'm teaching them, they say to me, what is the use of this differentiation and calculus and everything else if I'm not going to be a mathematician? Well, if you're going to be a pediatrician, you would actually follow a graph that would be based on this calculation. In fact, if you can speak to your mom, um, you'll find that when you were little, she had a book and they had like a growth uh, a growth chart they actually had a thing that they used to plot to see if you were growing right or not okay and that growth chart is based on a calculation like this okay now it says what is the average mass of the baby at birth according to this equation well at birth how many days will the baby be old it'll be zero old right so therefore if you substitute t equals zero into that, what are you left with? You're just left with a constant. So therefore, we can say that the average mass of the baby, according to this equation, is 3,2 kilograms. Hmm. It says, for a short period of time after birth, it is usual for a baby to lose mass. When, according to this equation, does a baby's mass reach a minimum? Okay, so even if when you read this question, you look at it and you go, oh, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what they're talking about. You see the word minimum. What do you guys know you have to do? If you see the guys word minimum, you go F dashed of X equals zero solve for X. Okay, but now obviously we need to translate that for this question. In this case, instead of F dashed of X, we're going to have M dashed of T because they say when, when, which day, when. Okay, so we're going to go M dashed of T is going to be now we want to okay i'm just going to make this a little bit easier for you before we carry on with the m dash of t so let's just rewrite this m of t to make it a little bit easier do you agree it's two cube t cubed over 864 minus t squared over 72 plus 3.2 now what some of you might find easier to cope with is if this was written as 1 over 864 times by t cubed, okay, minus 1 over 72 times by t squared, plus 3 comma 2, and that should have been a comma. Okay, so if you want to write it out like that, if it makes it easier for you, then you're welcome to write it out. Okay, but the most important thing is now what happens with m dashed of t. m dashed of t, we take the 3 and we bring it to the front, so it becomes... 3t squared 
over 864 minus 2t over 72, and that's it. Okay, the 3.2 goes away because there's no t there. Okay, similarly, yeah, if we just brought a 3, you'd have exactly the same type of thing, okay? It doesn't matter if you write it like this or like this, you're going to get the same answer. Let me just show you. This becomes 1 over 864 times by 3 t squared minus 1 over 72 times by 2 t. And this is why I think sometimes students find it easier to do this because then they can see that they need to cancel and it becomes 3, 6, etc. So you're welcome to do it either way. Okay, I'm going to carry on with this method here. Okay, but you're welcome to do both ways. So either way, shall I say. So now, da, 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 I just want to get this out of the way, get rid of it. So I've got space to write. Okay, so now let's carry on and I'm going to change color. So now we need to make this look pretty, okay? So first of all, three goes into eight. We need, let's see if it works. Um, instead of me doing it longhand, let's just work it out. It's going to be 864 divided by three. Yay, it goes 288 times. So it's T over 288 minus two goes into 72, 36 times. So it's T over 36, okay? Now, do you agree that what we, that is M dashed of T. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to let this equal naught and solve for t, because that's what you do when you're trying to find the minimum. Okay, so we're going to say t squared over 288 minus t over 36 is equal to zero. Okay, so you could find the common denominator in that, but there's another way you can do this, which is what I'm going to show you. You take it over to the other side. Um, just let me think about this. No, let's not do that. So let's take out, let's see if 36 goes into 288. So I'm going to take this and divide it by 36. Yay, it does. Okay, awesome. So what we can do is we can take out T over 36. T over 36. Okay. So then what happens? Do you agree that you end up with t over 8. How do I know that? Because on my calculator, I just took 288 and divided by 36 and I got 8. So 288 divided by 36 is 8 minus 1 is equal to 0. So you can get t over 36 is equal to 0 or t over 8 minus 1 equals 0. So therefore t equals 0 or t over 8 equals 1, therefore t is equal to 8. Now let's read the question that says that for a short period of time after the birth, so obviously that doesn't count, it is usual for the baby to lose mass. When according to the question, does the baby's mass reach a minimum? And that would be 8 days after birth. 8 days after birth. Okay, eight days after birth, they will reach a minimum and then they start picking up weight again. Okay, let's look at the different type of questions. So you will notice that in this paper, this this um, lesson, I'm basically going to be going through a whole bunch of different types of um, differenti differentiation and calculus questions. It is actually very important because it's plays a huge part in your exam paper, especially because you not just have, this is a, for example, um, optimization question, that's an optimization. This would be a graph question, that there is a nasty optimization question, that there is, again, an optimization question, that is a nasty one. So the point is that I've decided to go through all the nasty questions that I could find in differentiation so that you guys could see it and have a look at it. And then if you guys, the best thing to do, again, I'm gonna say to you, is to practice. So watch now if you want to, or try and watch, do these ahead of me, okay? Try and get them ahead of me, like now when I'm chatting, then start doing the question. Um, otherwise, if you're totally don't know what to do, then watch the video and then come back and then I would say pause the video at the beginning of each question like this. Now, pause. And then 
um, try and do the question by yourself and then when you finish trying to do it by yourself then watch it and see if you got it right or if you didn't where you struggled where, what you got wrong etc etc okay the best way to get this done is to actually practice so now it says a sketch shows a box with a square base okay there's a square base the volume of the box is 125 cubic centimeters the length of the base, let the length of the base be x, the size of them, and the height be h. It says determine the minimum surface area of the box. Okay, so let's talk about this. First of all, do you agree that a volume equation, volume equals area of base times by height? Okay. So the area of the base is going to be x squared, because it's x times x, times the height is h. And they tell us that is 125 centimeters. 125 centimeters. So now we've got an equation already that says that 125 is equal to x squared h. It's not a great equation because we've got two variables and there's only one. Okay. Also, that is volume, and they want the minimum surface area. Okay, so let's talk surface area surface area it's a box right so it's got six sides so we need to talk about those sides okay so first of all we've got that side and hang on let me just draw in some lines here so if I had to draw in some lines okay so now do you agree that we'd have the top and the bottom are going to be the same same size, right? So we've got two of them. And the area of them is x by x. So we've got 2x squared, okay? Plus, do you agree that we've got four sides that are equal? We've got this side here, which is x times h. We've got this side here, which is x times h. We've got this side here, which is x times h. And then we've got this front one, which is x times h. So we've got four of them, okay? So it's going to be plus 4xh. So our total surface area is 2x squared plus 4xh. So do you agree? We've also got two variables here, but we've got an equation here. So if I solve my volume equation for height, I could substitute that into that h, and that only have an equation with x's. Okay, do you get it? So I'm going to take the volume equation, okay, the volume equation, and I'm going to go, well, that is 125 is equal to x squared h. So do you agree that h is 125 over x squared, right? Now I'm going to take that, and I'm going to substitute into that. And I'm going to say, well, the surface area is 2x squared plus 4x over 1 times by 125 over x squared. Okay, there's the h, it's 125 over x squared, there's the h there. So this becomes 2x squared plus 4 fives are 20, 4 twos are 8, 9, 10, 4 ones are 4. I'm so confused. I think that's a 5. <laughs> yes, it is a 5. So it's 500 over x squared. Okay, right. So now what do we need to do? We need, so that is the equation for surface area, but what do they want? They want the minimum surface area. To get any minimum, what do we need to do? We need to find the derivative and let it equal naught. So we're going to get h dashed of x. I'm calling it s now. s dash dashed of x is going to be what? But before we do that, what do we have to do? Do you see that this x squared needs to be taken to the top? So this is written as 2x squared plus 500x to the negative 2. Okay? So then the derivative becomes 2 times by 2x, okay, plus 500 times by minus 2 x to the negative 3. I've taken the 2 to the front and subtracted 1. Now I've taken the minus 2 to the front and subtracted 1 to become minus 3. So that becomes 4x minus 1000 x to the negative 3. Okay? And that is x dash of x. Now what do we need to do? We now need to let that equal 0. So we go 4, actually you know what I'm going to write over here. 
I'm going to say for a minimum, s dashed of x has to equal zero. So we've got 4x minus 1,000 over x cubed is equal to zero. Okay. So first of all, do you I can take out a common factor of four? So let's take out a common factor of four. Okay. What are we left with? We're left with x minus four goes into a thousand uh, 250 times. So it's 250 over x cubed equals zero. Now we need to multiply everything by the x cubed to get rid of the x cubed at the bottom. So the four goes away because we divide both sides by four. So we get x to the power of four minus 250 is equal to zero. So do you agree that x to the power of four is equal to 250? So now we want x. So what do we do? We need our calculators out again. So we go and this time we need the nth root of it. I have to find it. Oh, there it is there. So it's just clear. So it's shift there and that's a four and that's 250 and that equals 3.976. It's rounded off to two decimal places, becomes 3.98. So that's 3,98. But now what was the question? The question was determine the minimum surface area. And do you agree that we got an equation for the surface area that said this? I realize I made a mistake. Very bad. Irritating and very bad. Okay, hang on a minute. I've realized I made a mistake. <gasps> Sorry guys. See, this is why you need to join the class because then you can email me and you can say, Candace, you've made a mistake. You forgot to cancel an X. And this would make the sum a lot easier if you did if you cancel the X. Okay, do you guys see what I did? I forgot to cancel this X. I just left it out. Let me show you. Okay, so let's go to over here. Um, and let's go blue. Yeah. There, this was my error. I forgot to get rid of that. So this becomes 2x squared plus 500 over x because that cancels with that. Okay, so now it changes to s of x is 2x squared plus 500 x minus 1. That's much nicer. I was wondering why I got funny numbers. Okay, so now we can find s dashed of x. I apologize profusely for the silly mistake. So it becomes 4x minus 500 x the negative 2. We're again going to let this equal 0. So we've got 4x minus 500 over x squared is equal to 0. Um, so we can divide both sides by, let's take out a common factor. I'm just thinking if 500 goes, 4 goes into 500. Pretty sure it does. Let's have a look. So 500, oops, let's clear it. Um, 500 divided by 4 equals 125. Excellent. So we got 4, and you're left with x minus 125, that's much better, over x squared equals 0. You divide both sides by 4, you get x cubed minus 125 equals 0. Same principle, we're multiplying everything by x squared. So x cubed equals 125, so x is going to be what? x is just going to be 5. Cube root of 125 is 5. Okay, so now we can substitute that back into this to find the surface area. And that's what I was saying earlier. You know, when you, I said to you guys, you need to be careful about what the question was. In the previous question, they asked you, what was the value of R for which the area was the minimum? Now they're saying, what is the actual minimum surface area? So we now need to substitute that back in to get that. So the surface area equals two times five squared plus 500 over five. So that's going to be two times 25 plus 100, which is going to be 50 plus 100, which equals 150 centimeters squared. We know it's centimeters because they told us that the unit we're working with is cubic centimeters. So therefore this is centimeters squared. 
Sure. Okay. So this question was quite tricky. And the reason this was quite tricky is because a couple of things. One, you had to realize, I mean, this would be like a nice 10 mark question, I think, 8 to 10 mark question. You had to realize a couple of things. You had to realize, one, that you had to make an equation with the volume. Two, you had to realize that you had to make an equation with the total surface area. The hint being that you they wanted the minimum surface area. Then you had to realize that you had to solve this for H and substitute it into this. You could have solved for X as well, but it would have looked very nasty. Then you had to differentiate, let it equal naught, solve that for X, and then substitute back into the surface area equation to get the, to the, the minimum surface area. So it was quite a tricky question. You need to be careful about these things, okay? Right, let's do this one. Now, again, another reason why you need a calculus is not just because teachers want to be nasty. A biologist states that with a cert when a certain type of antibacterium is introduced into culture bacteria, the number of bacteria present is given by the formula where B of T in millions is the number of bacteria present at time T, which is in hours, okay? It says how many bacteria were present at the beginning? Well, at the beginning, T would equal zero, right? So then this would be zero, this would be zero, and this would be 1,500 million. Remember that this is in millions. So that would be 1,500 million. Then it says, at what moment was the maximum number of bacteria present? So remember, what are we doing? We're going to find B dashed of T, and we're going to let it equal zero, okay? That's all that we are doing. It says at what moment? So what are we looking for? We're looking for the T. So it tells us that B of T, sorry, B of T is equal to minus 4 T squared plus 60 T plus 1500, right? So now we're going to get B dash of T. B dash of T is going to be minus 4 times by 2 T plus 60. The 1500 goes away. So that becomes minus 8t plus 60. And what do we need to do? We now need to let it equal zero. So it says for the maximum number, we have to let b dashed of t equal zero. Okay. So we're going to say fine, we can do that. We go minus 8t t plus 60 equals 0. Therefore, minus 8 t is equal to minus 60. Therefore, t is going to be 60 over 8, which is what? Okay, it's going to be 7 point something. 60 divided by 8 is going to be 7,5 7, hours. So it says, at what moment was the maximum number of bacteria present? 7.5 hours after the start of the experiment. Okay, not too difficult, hey? You just need to keep understanding the principle behind what we're doing. Right, now, I like this question. It says, if f of x equals 3x squared minus 2x, determine f dash of x from first principles. So there are a couple of questions here. You can think this is question 1, this is question 2, this is question 3 with bits to it, okay? And this actually, obviously, all of them came out of old exam paper questions. But the reason I brought this question in now is because of the fact that I really, really wanted you guys to start realizing that you can actually have different questions within one exam paper. We obviously can. And if you can't, just forget about certain parts of your differentiation. So let's do the first principles, okay? So... We know that f dash of x equals the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And that's on your formula sheet. So there's no excuse to get that wrong. Okay, that's on your formula sheet. So now let's do it. The easiest way to do this always is to work out what f of x plus h is first. So f of x plus h is going to be 3x plus h all squared minus 2x plus h, which is going to be 3x squared plus 2xh plus h squared 
minus 2x minus 2h, which becomes 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 2x minus 2h. And there are no like terms, so there's, that's it. That's all we can do. Now we need to find the derivative. We need to differentiate with first principles. So we got f dashed of x equals the limit as h tends to zero. And I'm not going to rewrite this because I'm going to run out of space, okay? So it's this thing. It's 3x squared plus 6xh minus 3h squared minus 2x minus 2h minus bracket 3x squared minus 2x, okay, all over h. Okay, so let's get rid of those brackets. It becomes the limit. And remember what I told you, you can't get rid of this limit as h tends to 0. If you drop it, you gain 2 make a mistake, okay, so you can't go around dropping it. So it becomes 3x squared plus 6xh minus 3h squared minus 2x minus 2h minus 3x squared minus, minus, minus plus 2x all over h. We're going to cancel those and we're going to cancel those. So what are you left with? You're left with the limit as h tends to 0 of 6xh minus 3h squared minus 2h. Am I right? 6xh minus 2. Okay, yes, I'm right. All over h. Now we're going to take out a common factor of h because we can. There's h, h squared and h. So we're going to go to the limit as h tends to 0 of h, 6x minus 3h minus 2, that's a 2, all over h, that cancels. And now we're left with dealing with the limit. So what are we saying? We're saying, let's see what happens, what happens to this, what does this become when h gets so close to 0 that it minus b b be equal to zero. And when that happens, this guy is equal to zero. So you're left with 6x minus 2. And the coolest thing, grade 12s, is you can actually check it. Okay, you can actually do this by first, I mean, my normal rule would we'll take the 2 to the front, become 6x, drop the 2, I mean, x becomes minus 2. Yeah, it's right. So you can actually check that your answer is right without even going, with, without even stressing too much. Okay. Right, so now that we've done that, let's move on to the next bit. It says, and let's just change color, determine the derivative of root x plus x plus 2, 2x two minus 1, and state your answer with positive exponents. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is change that to an exponent. The second thing we need to do is multiply these brackets, and then we can derive, okay? So let's do that. So we're going to go d of x of x to the half plus, now we need to multiply these brackets. So x times 2x is 2x squared. x times minus 1 is minus x. This times this is plus 4x. And this times this is, oh, sorry, that times that is minus 2. Okay, so let's now neaten that up. So we got d of x of x to the half, right, plus 2x squared, minus x plus 4x is plus 3x minus 2. So now we need to find the derivative of it. So that becomes, you take that to the front, becomes a half x minus a half. That goes to the front, becomes plus, 2 times 2 is 4x, plus 3. Okay, we're almost finished. This is the derivative, but now what they've asked us to do is they want it in positive exponents, which means they need us to take this to the bottom. So that becomes 1 over 2 square root x, you could leave it like that, or actually they did say positive exponents, so let's just fix that and rather write it as x to the half plus 4x 
plus 3. All I've done is taken that minus and put it down to the bottom. Okay, so it's 1 over 2, x of plus 4x plus 3. There you go. And that is that answer there. Okay, now, now, now. Let's do the next one, which says they want us to just consider the function h of x, which equals 1 6 x cubed minus 1 third x squared minus 5 over 2 x. It says sketch h showing the intercepts of the axes and the coordinates of the stationary points. Okay, so firstly, remember the first thing we're going to do is find the y cut. And do you agree that the y cut equals 0, which is quite nice because there's a plus 0 here. Now we need to find the x cuts, and how do we do that? We're going to let the whole of this equal 0, and then we're going to solve for it, okay? So we're going to solve for the x. So we go 0 is equal to 1 over 6x cubed minus 1 over 3x squared minus 5 over 2x. So do you agree we can take out a common factor of x? Okay, so that's quite nice. We can take out a common factor of x. And we're left with 1 over 6x cubed, sorry, squared. Squared minus 1 over 3rd x minus 5 over 2. And that equals 0. So do you agree we can immediately say that we have that x equals 0 or... Okay, so we can ignore that now. So now we've got naught is equal to this thing. 1 over 6x squared minus 1 over 3x minus 5 over 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the denominators. I'm going to do that by multiplying the whole thing through by 6. So if I do that, I've got x squared minus 3 goes into 6 twice. This becomes 2x minus 5 times 3. So 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 15. So if I factorize that, do you agree that I'm going to have x and x and a 5 and a 3 and it's minus 5 and plus 3. Therefore x equals 5 or x equals minus 3. So therefore my x cuts are x equals 0 or x equals minus 3, or x is equal to 5. Okay, those are my x cuts. So now I've got the y cut and the x cuts. Okay, so to determine the intercepts, done that. Now we need to find the coordinates of the stationary points. So in order to do that, what do I need to do? It's what we've been doing all along. In order to find the stationary points, we're going to find the first derivative. And then we're going to let it equal 0 and we're going to solve for x, okay? Because remember the stationary points are the same thing as max and min, local max and min. Okay, so let's choose a color. Really doesn't matter. So we're going to go h dashed of x is going to be 1 6 times by 3 x squared minus 1 over 3 times by 2 x minus 5 over 2. Okay, so that becomes 3 over 6 x squared minus 2 over 3 x minus 5 over 2. Do you agree that changes to a half? But that really doesn't matter, it's h dash of x, right? So then, do you agree we now need to let that equal 0 and solve for x, right? So we're going to say 0 is equal to 1 over 2x squared minus 2 over 3x minus 5 over 2. So I'm going to multiply everything by 6 again to get rid of the, because the common denominator of 2 and 3 is 6. I'm going to multiply everything by 6. So we end up with 3x squared minus 4x minus 5 times 3 is 15 again. And grade 12s, I'm going to stop here. Again, I would like to challenge you to try and do the rest of this question for homework and we will carry on with this on Monday. Have a great weekend. Cheers.